Well, the midterms, midterms are just two weeks away. There are fears of voter intimidation. The sheriff in Metropolitan Phoenix says he's stepping up security around ballot boxes two weeks before the midterm elections. This action comes amid complaints of armed vigilantes patrolling drop boxes in the region. Arizona Secretary of State and gubernatorial candidate Katie Hobbs says her office has received several complaints. She also reported a threatening email sent to the state elections director. Joining us now is CBS News senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe, who's always on top of all of it. Hey there, Ed. So tell us, what's fueling these potential voter intimidation tactics in Arizona? How concerned should we be? Lily and Lana, good to see you. We've got to remember, Arizona was the state that had the closest margin of victory for President Biden uh, among big battleground states in 2020. And this year has several Republican candidates running for statewide office who are, in essence, those that stoke questions about the results of the 2020 elections, believe in the baseless conspiracy theories around them. Uh, Carrie Lake, who's running for governor, has said that uh, she won't certify the results of this year's elections uh, unless she wins, or at least she's at least inferred that. The secretary of state candidate, Mark Fincham, a Republican, over the weekend was on Twitter stoking concerns about these drop boxes. And there's been longstanding theories, unfounded, about the use of drop boxes that are fueled by uh, different documentaries that have been made by conservatives and whatnot that question how ballots are getting sent uh, or put in drop boxes uh, across the state. So uh, a lot of this is not unique to Arizona, but certainly higher stakes. And the incidents involving armed people standing near these drop boxes is certainly something we haven't seen yet anywhere else. I mean, Ed, election denial uh, leading to now voter intimidation is, is a huge headline in this election cycle. But how are officials responding to this voter intimidation? This is serious business. They have been referred several of these uh, cases so far by Arizona officials. And the Justice Department has said generally it's on the lookout for these kinds of cases across the country and will prosecute if necessary. Separately, there's an election intimidation or election threats task force that's tasked with looking at potential threats against election workers, elections officials, as they conduct the counting of ballots across the country as well. So they're certainly poised to be ready to prosecute cases that make sense, and they're ready for referrals. Uh, and, and this is going to be one of those sort of tricky issues coming out of the election, probably more so than even before, as results come in across the country and different sides dispute the results. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just sort of one of the unfortunate outgrowths of the last few years of campaigning. Yeah. Interesting that that's where our democracy seems to be now. Uh, hey, Ed, tonight on Red and Blue, you're anchoring and focusing on Latino voters and the midterms. That's right. Tell us about it. Well, Enrique Acevedo is going to join us from Miami to talk about misinformation in the Spanish language space with voters not only in South Florida but across the country, something he's been looking into. Mm -hmm. We'll look at that in, in, in the realm of last night's debate in Florida between the two gubernatorial candidates, the incumbent Ron DeSantis, his Democratic challenger Charlie Chris. That's all coming up at 5 Eastern here on CBS News. Well, we look right. forward to it, Ed, and uh, we saw some polling that Latinos in Florida, to no surprise to both you and I, uh, favor Republicans, not the same as in other parts of the country, but I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you break that all down with uh, my friend Enrique. Thank you. All righty. Take care. As a reminder, you can stream the day's political news on Red and Blue tonight, starting at 5 p.m. Eastern.